it is the home of Steel Pan, Calypso and the Caribbean's most colorful carnival. Trinidad and Tobago is also the home of Penny Cummins Young, Miss Universe 1977, and Wendy Fitzwilliam, Miss Universe 1998. And now, the Twin Island Republic at the southern tip of the Caribbean will be the home of the last Miss Universe pageant of this century. We are trying to develop Trinidad and Tobago to be a total quality nation. And in pursuit of excellence, we have to make that quantum leap. We're using the pageant as a sort of catalyst to make that quantum leap. The country that overflows with natural beauty will be host to beauties from more than 80 countries. The event is carded for May 26th and will be seen in 120 countries by an estimated TV audience of about 2.5 billion. Organizers are hopeful that the pageant will not only showcase the country's diverse culture. They're inviting some pretty weighty VIPs like Donald Trump, Mohammed Al-Fayed and others with more than just a pageant in mind. Essentially, we are taking the opportunity while they're in Trinidad for the pageant to show them some of the investment opportunities. As you may be aware, Mr. Trump is heavily involved in real estate, and he has already indicated an interest in resort real estate development. The venue for the gala event will be called the Center of the Universe, but it is actually an old military facility. Architects and engineers are transforming this boat hangar built in 1941 into a Hollywood set, complete with bleacher-type seating for about 4,000 spectators. And we have. Uh three, four separate projects going on here right now to bring the, the, whole, uh, the whole hangar complex together for the, for the, for the pageant. We expect uh, um, to bring everything together by the, by the middle of April when the, when the uh, Miss Universe technical people arrive to, to start putting in their, their equipment. The inside will be draped with black velvet and other material according to Miss Universe Inc. specifications to create the stage and hide the fact that the venue is still a hangar. There will be no permanent structures on the hangar, since the pageant committee is renting the site until the night of the show. The attention will help upgrade Trinidad's facilities. What's happening here, this whole thing has sparked uh, a movement, uh, an upgrading of the infrastructure. The, the phone system is being upgraded from 600 lines to 2600 lines. The, the uh, power system, the power grid uh, is going to have triple redundancy out here now, whereas it didn't have before. Um, we're, the hangar gets a new roof, it gets some new washrooms uh, uh, for, for the tenant. The pageant committee itself includes locals from a broad cross-section of Trinidad and Tobago, from the private sector to government ministries to the media. They'll all head back to their respective jobs after the show. Phones at the pageant center have been ringing off the hook at a rate of at least 100 calls per day. And for those eager for more information about the show... Well, we're using three means of access, for accessing of information um, through the internet. We have a website, through our embassies overseas, and we are also using Rubenstein of New York, who are the PR consultants to Miss Universe Incorporated, to promote the pageant. One parliamentarian says the show will be the nation's golden opportunity for international exposure, since the world's eyes will be focused on the Twin Island Republic for the two weeks leading up to and including the pageant. To me, this is an extraordinary opportunity to capture the flavor, the culture, the music, the dance, and all that belongs to Trinidad and Tobago in a two-hour capsule. The total cost to pull this off is nine million U.S. dollars. It seems our entire nation, population 1.3 million, is at least in some way animated about this. We're all keeping our fingers crossed that the crown worn by Miss Universe 1999 will not be the only thing shining on the night of May 26th. Jared Sisnet, TTT News for the CNN World Report.